Well, hi, and welcome to another segment of While We're Apart. We've been talking this week about coping with a complex, and we've looked at some characters in the Bible who had a real inferiority complex. We were talking yesterday about how to overcome this, and, and first of all, to realize that we are a unique uh, creation from God put on this earth to do something that we're supposed to do, and we shouldn't really worry about what others are doing. Now, secondly, I said, that our becoming all that we should be for God is a process that's still going on. Uh, the Apostle Paul said in Philippians 1.6, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it. That word means complete it or be completing it until the day of Jesus Christ. The one who has begun a good work in us is our, our God, our Creator. And that happened not only when He made us, but especially when He saved us. This, this work He wants us to do began. So the process is still ongoing. Now let me just say thirdly, refuse to compare yourselves to others. Because the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 10, 12, that when we measure ourselves by others and compare ourselves among others, we're not wise. And I mentioned yesterday, even your children, be careful with this because they're going to have uh, different academic skills, get different grades, uh, have different athletic abilities. And honestly, it, it doesn't make or break a person because a sibling is better than them at something or another. In fact, uh, a young person, if we overly commend them on that, can get prideful. We have to be careful there. But if we're on them for not getting those grades, they can get hurt or offended. So let's be careful with our children. And honestly, kids grow up and they become adults, one of us, as it were. And we grow up with these feelings of inferiority or pride one or the other. And honestly, life is too short to, to even worry on that stuff. We're only here a few years. And so we have to be careful not to be comparing ourselves to others, but just trying to do our personal best and being in competition with nobody else but ourselves. You know, maybe somebody might pastor a larger church than me or a smaller church than me. Um, it doesn't matter. Maybe somebody might have a better job than you have or a better house than you have. But let's keep our eyes on the Lord. Now let me say fourthly, let's respond correctly to our shortcomings, the defects, the scars. I mean, let's try and change them if we can, but if we can't, so be it. You know, I think Paul had an infirmity of the flesh. He mentioned it. It might have been poor vision. And God said, that's just my will for you. And so use that defect as God's marking on your life. We used to have a preacher come to our church every year. He's with the Lord now, but, but Dr. Richard M. Hayes, um, he was quite a guy, one of the greatest Christians I've ever known. He had this big brother who was a strapping guy and a, a golden gloves boxer. And Brother Hayes' dad was bound determined to make both of them golden gloves champion. Well, Mike Hayes was a, a little guy. He was wide. He had short uh, arms. He was left-handed. It's just, honestly, everything was wrong. But... God made him the most amazing biblical counselor I've ever known. You know, the experiences of your life and my life have shaped us to be exactly what God needs us to be in the 21st century. Now, let me mention this to parents. Build things into your kids now that cultivate a healthy esteem. If they're weak in certain areas, don't force it. I, I mean, if they're chicken little, don't try and make them some strapping athlete. Or if they can't carry a tune in a bucket, don't carry out your dream of being a singer through them. All right? Don't chide them for not being something they just weren't created to be. And, and don't let words continually be shrapnel in their flesh. Don't overemphasize mistakes that weren't on purpose, like spilling milk and so on. Be wise in the praise or the rebukes, because it's a fine line between cultivating pride versus insecurity. Now, proper esteem doesn't come from society. It doesn't come from school. It doesn't come from friends. It must come from the home. It needs to come from mom and dad. You know what people want is, is clear security, is healthy esteem. And if we have that, life is so much better. You know, the ideal employee is really not the person with the PhD. 
but the person with proper self-worth. You know, self-esteem, as it's called, is, is how you feel about yourself, a feeling of self-worth, content with being you. And I can't overemphasize how important that is. And parents, really the greatest contribution you can make to your children after salvation is if that child one day leaves home feeling okay, then you've done your job. At, at that point, God can have his way with them. If that's not nurtured, that child is in for a long life. Now, according to the Bible, and especially in five, Ephesians 5, I, I find the, the principle at least that we can't properly love others if we don't even consider ourselves lovable. We'll be constantly preoccupied with self. And, and when you feel like you can't contribute in some way, you feel like a fifth wheel. And so you take everything wrong, and people like this, they, they go through life uh, paranoid, uh, continually put down or putting others down. And, and honestly, I see this passed on. These complexes get passed on to, to our kids and to others. A child must feel that they're valuable. And if they do, they won't be so vulnerable. And, and so kids will give you plenty to correct. I've said many times they have little skulls of mush and they're often lazy and they're uh, absent-minded and they forget stuff. And, and so you're going to have to look for something to, to compliment or to nurture. And, and, and so recognize in them the potential that they have and, and go with it. And it might mean going to ball games if they want to play that or paying for lessons if they want to take music lessons or whatever it takes, but help them in their progress. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some money. But if you have a kid who's uh, mechanically inclined, go with that. Let them know it and channel their strengths. If kids have a, a flair in a certain way, let them know that. Nurture that. Iron sharpeneth iron. Now, we've talked about the awareness of a, comp a complex. We've talked about the, the adjustments that need to be made along the way. Now, finally, we're going to be talking about the acceptance of a complex. How do we bring this home to you? Now, <clears throat> consider you and the Lord as a team. And, and you not in competition with anyone else. You and God are in this thing called life together. And how is it now that, that you can do something as the human being, yea, the Christian that God has made you? How can you use what God has made you to be for His glory and honor? We're out of time today, and I wish I had more time to go into this. But I'm going to explain this tomorrow, so please join me back here at that time as we once again get together while we're apart. God bless you, and have a great day. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope.